Hello, everybody. Welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be back with you again. I hope everything was fine during the storm that we had and that uh, you and your family are fine. Okay, so uh, tomorrow we will be finishing the whole class. So that is very good. I've been uh, checking that everybody only, I guess, Roxanne is missing a part of the final test. But uh, other than that, everybody has finished. And that is very good. Uh, also, remember that tomorrow we will be doing the uh, the survey, right? So tomorrow is the final day. And tomorrow we will be doing the answer for survey. Tomorrow is the final day and we will just practice English. Okay, also today we're going to practice a little bit some tests and then uh, we want to go watch some videos about some information about the topic and the other is about slangs. Okay, uh, before we move on, uh, I'm going to show you the platform. This is the class of today and here is the question for tonight. So if you want to participate, you can just answer that one. Okay. And uh, we are going to check the attendance as usual. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Maria Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramon Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present teacher. Good. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Perfect. So, my friends, we're going to start with a little video. Uh, we were checking about TOEIC and some other certifications last class. So, that was kind of interesting. And there was a video that I wanted to show you, but the time was very short. So, we're going to watch it today, okay? So, let's see. Welcome to 2022. Welcome back to E2 TOEIC. I'm Jay. And I'm Mark. And in this video, we're going to talk about passing TOEIC in 2022. You can do it, and we are going to help. That's right. If you're watching this, it means you need to get your TOEIC scores in 2022 and maybe you need to get them next week or next month or maybe in six months time. And maybe you just need reading and listening scores. Either way, you have to start thinking about it now. Mark, you've been teaching English language test prep for 10 years. What's the most important thing someone should do to pass their TOEIC? You need to set goals. You need to break your main goal of passing TOEIC into smaller daily goals and weekly goals so that the main goal becomes achievable. The first thing you should do is download the 2022 TOEIC Goal Setter from the description below. That's right. You're going to use the Goal Setter to set your daily and weekly goals and stick to them so you can achieve your main goal of getting a high score. Right. We'll be working through this goal setter as we move through the video together. Download it, print it out, stick it on your fridge, use it. Just keep in mind that E2's helped over one and a half million students get the English language test scores they need. So we know what you need to do. I also recommend subscribing to this YouTube channel and following us. 
And if you really just want to get the job done as soon as possible, click the link in the description below and go across to E2 Test Prep. Okay, before we look at each section of the test and what you need to do to pass, I want to quickly talk to you about three considerations before you do anything. First, find out your target scores. Right. It's up to you to find out what score you need for your job. This is a critical first step as it sets a stake in the ground. This becomes your aim or target. Second, find out your current scores. Exactly. You need to know where you stand or where your English is in relation to your target scores. You can do this by doing practice questions on E2. The TOEIC preparation course on E2 is perfect for building your TOEIC skills and scores. It covers all four skills and has hundreds of high quality practice questions. Great. So I know my target scores and I will know my current scores. What's the third consideration? Third, determine the gap between your target scores and your current scores. This is your major aim to close this gap. We're now going to go through each section of the test and Mark and I will give you our most important goal setting tips, okay? Make sure you get the downloadable goal setter from the description below. By doing this now, it'll make your life a lot easier in the future. Okay, let's talk about how to pass TOEIC listening in 2022. I highly recommend listening to podcasts. They're a great way to improve your English while you're doing something else, like driving or sitting on the bus. And I highly recommend subscribing to the Everyday English Podcast by E2. It's a podcast in English about learning English, so it's super helpful. Great idea. So write this onto your daily goal setter for listening. Listen to some English every single day, even if it's just two minutes, it'll help. What do you recommend for TOEIC listening, Jay? My biggest tip is to learn the four TOEIC listening tasks back to front. You need to know part one, the photographs questions, part two, question response, part three, conversations, and part four, the talks. And I'd really recommend practicing part four, the talks. You might want to write this down as your weekly goal. Attend a TOEIC listening live class on E2 each week. Yeah, they're great, very helpful. And our teachers are the best. All right, let's talk about how to pass TOEIC reading in 2022. What's your main tip to get a high score in reading in 2022, Jay? Uh, well, I hate to say it, but reading is all about vocabulary. So you'll need to continually build your vocabulary. As such, I recommend reading in English every single day. Even if it's just one news story or one magazine article, try to make it a habit. Write this down as your daily goal for reading. I'd also recommend reading widely across a variety of topics and also keeping flashcards to note down new words. So when you come across a new word, think about whether it's a noun, a verb, or an adjective, write it down, and then write down the translation on the back. And then you need to review your vocab once a week as well. Yeah, good idea. You never know what the reading passages will be about, so it's a good idea to have a broad vocabulary and to be comfortable reading about a broad range of topics. So what I would do as my weekly goal for reading is do some high quality practice questions on E2. You'll start to see how these questions work, how the synonyms work, how the distractors work, and how to understand those tricky question types. All right, Jay, so before we get into writing, what about you? What are your goals for 2022? Well, I'm going to study maths and physics, not. Whoa. <laughs> no, not really. It's not my thing. Uh, this year, I'm going to study Farsi, which is the Persian language with it, which they speak in uh, Iran and Afghanistan, I think in Tajikistan as well. So that's my goal. So every day, I'm going to learn a little bit of vocabulary. I'm going to have my weekly goals as well, where I listen to a podcast or something like that. That's my aim for 2022. Pretty cool. Yeah. What about you? Well, 
Uh, I'm learning Catalan. Uh, I've been learning it for a little while. I'm already at a pretty intermediate level. Mm -hmm. uh, Catalan is a language they speak in northeastern Spain. And uh, yeah, I've got to really step up my regular uh, reading and listening. And I'm going to make a better effort as well uh -huh. to make notes on uh, not just new vocabulary, but short expressions that I can also use when I'm speaking. Nice. Yeah. So you'll have daily and weekly goals? Yes. So it'll be reading, listening, but more importantly, I'm going to be reviewing uh, the vocabulary that I make notes of. And it's not going to be like lots and lots and lots. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of important to have like, you know, maybe 16 short phrases or or key organization words and to learn those really well. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not going to try to learn, you know, translations or, or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Make your goals achievable. Yeah. All right. We're up to writing. So how do we pass TOEIC writing in 2022? You may not have to do a TOEIC writing as part of your test, but it's a great chance to improve your written English. What's your biggest tip for improving writing, Jay? My biggest tip is to improve your grammar. You can't have sloppy grammar. You know, little things like articles or prepositions or verb tenses, you have to get them right. In order to do this, I recommend checking out another YouTube channel we have called E2 English. So in the search bar, just search E2 English or click the link in the description below. There are lots of great videos on there to help straighten out your grammar. Write this into your weekly goal setter. Watch one E2 English video per week. It's really important that you learn how to structure your writing, especially the essay. Learning how to write the TOEIC essay will really help you out. Again, you can learn all of this in our live classes on E2. So we have two weekly tips. Watch an E2 English grammar video here on YouTube and join the live writing classes. Do you have any daily tips? Well, you know the vocabulary that you learned earlier. Use it in a sentence. Write a sentence with it. Maybe when you create your flashcard, write an example sentence in that flashcard. So, in short, write a sentence or two every day using the vocabulary that you've learned from reading. Okay, let's talk about how to pass TOEIC speaking in 2022. Again, you may not have to take TOEIC speaking as part of your exam, but this is a fantastic opportunity to improve your speaking. What's your biggest tip to improve speaking, Jay? Well, if you don't have someone to speak English with, then I'd recommend reading aloud. It's a really helpful way to train your pronunciation and gain confidence, and it's actually a TOEIC question type as well. So on your goal sheet, you might want to write down read aloud under the daily speaking goal. What about you, Mark? What do you think is critical for TOEIC speaking success? Personally, I think doing all of the practice questions on E2 will help your speaking. They're a great resource for practicing your pronunciation and other speaking skills. So maybe once a week, do some practice TOEIC speaking questions on E2. Okay, so here are our final tips to pass TOEIC in 2022. Don't leave it to the last minute. I've seen a lot of people prepare for their TOEIC test the week before or the day before their test, then they get their results and of course they're disappointed. So you need to plan ahead and use your time wisely, but we are here to help you. What about you? Do a little bit of practice every day and don't forget to join the live classes at E2 so you can interact with our teachers. Fantastic. Do you have any tips? Put them into the comments below and don't forget to click subscribe. My name is Jay. I'm Mark. Thank you very much. And we wish you the best of luck on your TOEIC test. Okay, so what did you get from this video? That we have to start preparing ourselves. That is true. So, I'm sorry. It seems there are some problems in the connection. I'm sorry. Can you please repeat? Not that we have to start preparing ourselves from now, not not wait until uh, the the day.
it is near. Very good. So that's actually why I brought you this topic uh, this time. I mean, because I mean, we're adding advanced too, but we need to start practicing for that one already, right? So that is important. Which tips, apart from the from the commercial, right? Which tips do you find interesting that we can use? Read, read aloud. If you don't have any uh, another person with to talk with, um, you can read aloud, read loud, uh, or, or aloud. And as uh, he say, uh, you can gain confidence <laughs> with your pronunciation. Very good. So that's it. So uh, that is one that is. Uh, one very good tip that you can do by yourself. I mean, you can read anything, newspapers, uh, stories on the internet. And if you find a word that you don't know the pronunciation, you can go online and check the pronunciation. So nowadays technology makes everything easier. Uh, so if you want to be sure, just go online and enter that word in the translator and you will be able to to check the pronunciation and then you can read out loud. So that is going to be very useful. Very well, any other tip that you found interesting? Uh, teacher, uh, for me, I found it interesting that um, he advised to listen podcast and not, um, um any podcast any kind of podcast he focus on the podcast which um is explain something about english so um while we are doing um, any task and daily in the daily basis and uh, we are understanding we are getting vocabulary and also we are learning from from english because it's there are podcasts about English, about learning how to learn English. So there are some tips. Um, um, yeah, I think um, I'm going to start doing that, that because I think it's something very useful. And because, like he said, while we're doing anything, we can um, listen in the podcast and start getting the vocabulary tips so it's important i think it's interesting that that tip very good perfect so yes actually that is something that we can do and we can get entertained at the same time so yeah you can find podcasts about anything i mean it's going to be very easy for you to find anything that you are interested in i mean if you like books, if you like video games, if you like music, if you like history, you can go and look for those kind of things and you will be able to learn, to learn. I mean, if you do that every day, I mean, maybe when, while you're driving or at night when you imagine that you can't sleep, so maybe 20 minutes and then I'll move on and you can find them. Uh, you can find them actually everywhere. I mean, in Spotify, you can find some readings about some uh, books. You can find lots of things there. Very good, very interesting. Any other tip that you found interesting here in this video? What, what I heard uh, and I like is not leave uh, uh, all for, for the last minute because that will add additional stress. <laughs> so it's important to, um, they say, prepare and, and, and wisely schedule when to do it in order to not only be prepared, but is to avoid additional stress. Very good. And actually that is for everything, I mean, I remember that the last module we were speaking, why are you learning English? Also this module. And uh, some of you say, because uh, we want to get a new job, to travel, uh, to do many things. 
So you can start preparing for that one now. You have the vocabulary, you have the knowledge to start doing things like that, to be ready for a new interview, uh, to be ready for, uh, I mean, if you want to go to certain country, start researching about the country, uh, researching about slangs, um, cities, uh, research in English. So you can do that one. So it's not only for the tests, uh, but for the goals that you have. If you really want to achieve something, the right moment to start is always now. It's not tomorrow because if we are like tomorrow, uh, I mean, tomorrow we're going to say tomorrow and that's it, right? So we will be procrastinating this a long, long time. So that is that is something that we need to start doing. Good, any other tip that you heard that was interesting? This one or any opinion about this? Teacher, what I didn't get is if the uh, what they were offering it is an, an an app or what is it? For a site they, or yeah, that is a platform. It's a platform that you pay for and you have resources for you to practice uh, the TOEIC. Uh, it's not necessarily that one. I mean, you will find actually uh, for free online resources for you to practice for the TOEIC. And uh, I was telling somebody, uh, I don't know if for the whole class, that if we are together by any chance there for the TOEIC or if you want some help, I have some cities uh, that actually they have two tests of the toy, the whole test. So you can practice. You can practice in many ways. There are websites where you can go and practice two or three questions, but now you know what is going to be like the questions and then practice this kind of exercise. So they offer a platform, but we can always get that for free. So Okay, and, and are they similar as, as the ones you sent us here in the chat? is not that similar i mean this is like information or something like that but this is like uh, you pay for that one and there are some exercises very similar to the toy like listening reading essays and there are some videos that they provide you to uh, to improve let's say to focus on the test and then pass the test uh, my best advice for you is not to get something like that is maybe to practice it's very important to to find this kind of questions and understand how it's going to be like. But then your English is the one. I mean, if you are good in English, that's the thing. Actually, today we're going to continue with the tests. Do you remember the tests that we were doing? So you can identify which uh, topics you need to study more. So that is what you need to do. And of course, get related to the test and check how it's going to be like. Okay. Okay, I really like a, that, a tip that they say that it was about vocabulary. I mean, you read. That is more or less the, the one that I was trying to do with you since last month. Read and you are going to find new vocabulary, new words, definitely. Okay, so that is the first step to read. A new word that you find, you can write it down and look for the meaning of the word. Maybe the problem is that sometimes we find 20 new words we find the meaning of that one and that's it so in a month in three months we don't remember we know that we know but we don't know exactly what is that like so uh, he says something that is very important that you need to move for to the other 20 words for example until you learn these first 20 words you can practice by writing uh, sentences, uh, paragraphs using the words, so you can understand the way that you can use it and the context where uh, the words can be applied. Uh, but the problem that sometimes we have, and th this is for everybody in Latin America, I mean, we say, ah, this is like this, and that's it, right? We move on. But you need to be sure uh, you really want to, to learn new vocabulary, that these words, you know they them from very well. The way you use it, the way that you are going to use them in a conversation, things like that. So that is very important. It's not just, oh, this is a new word, look for the dictionary and that's it, and I forget about it. So it's not that way, right? So we need to 
get involved. And that's actually why they say that you need to practice every day. I mean, you need to listen to something in English every day, at least five minutes. And you need to write something in English and you need to try to speak or at least read aloud in English. So that is going to give you the potential that we have. For example, in mind that yeah, sometimes we don't have classes for sometimes a month. So if you don't practice for a month, of course, you will start to forget, right? You start not to use the words. And then when we start the class again, then we say, oh man, I don't remember this thing. Or I don't remember, or I don't feel very confident speaking in English. So imagine what is going to happen when you finish the classes, that you are not going to have classes anymore. So since right now, you need to start practicing by yourself. That is going to be good for you. A little bit. I know that we are busy. I'm, I mean, we have jobs and we have family and we have a lot of things to do. But meanwhile, you're cooking. I mean, you can turn on the TV and watch the news in English and that will help. So that is very, very important. Uh, that is not only the English classes for you to practice, but you can practice in many, many ways. Good, any other comment about this? No more, okay. So we are going to continue with this, the test that we were checking. Let's see how it goes this time. Today and tomorrow we will be doing this and tomorrow also we're going to check some other activities. So um, this is a question, different kinds of questions. This is a general question. As usual, we're going to check what might be the answer and we're going to agree. The majority wins as usual, okay? So choose the correct forms to complete the following questions. As the first one, Tom has gone somewhere, but I don't know where is he gone? He's gone, has he gone? Aha, uh -huh. help me please. You are the ones who know. Is he gone? Is he gone, okay? Everybody agrees on this one? Uh huh. It'd be the last one. Has he gone? Uh huh. So we have is he gone and has he gone? What about the rest of the people? Um, he's and gone. The, the second one, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. Now we have one, one, and one. I, I say he's gone too. The second. The second one, he's gone. So we have three for his gun. I guess this is the winner by now. Let's he's see. gone? He's gone. He's gone. Okay. This is the winner, my friends. Let's see how it goes after a while. Number two, this book belongs to somebody. Who does it belong? Who belongs to? Who does it belong to? Mm. The third one. Does, does it belong to? That's one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first one, right? Number one. Does it belong? Yeah. Okay. No, the last one. Yes. For me, it's the last one. Uh, oh, I, the last say, one. The third. I say the, the third. The okay. third one. Does, does it, belong it belong to? to? Okay. Everybody agrees on this one? We have three books. Yes. Okay. Yes, does it belong to? Does it belong to them, my friends? So the next one is number three. Somebody lives in that house. Who does live in that house? Who live or who lives in that house? Lives. 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 Hey, you agree on this one. Very good. Number four. This word means something. What? Does it mean, means, or it means? Does it mean? Does it mean? Does yeah. It mean? What does it? What does it mean? What does it mean? We will know very soon. Number five. 
they were talking about something. What they were talking about or what were they talking about or about what were they talking about? Second one, what were they talking about? Okay. What Everybody. were they talking about? What were? Two votes for that one. One more. What were? What were? Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the winner. Good. Number six, something fell on the floor. What didn't fall or fell or did fall on the floor? Fell. Fell. And the rest of the people? Fell. Uh -huh. Fell. 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 Good. So you have studied, have seen. The library is somewhere near. Do you know where is near the library or where is the library or where the library is? The third one is where, where, where the, the library, library is. Where the library is, yeah. Okay, so let's take that one. Number eight, she borrowed the money from somebody. I wonder who did she borrow money from or uh, she borrowed money from or did she borrow money? The second one, who she yeah, borrowed the second money, one. money from? Okay, she I borrowed who she borrowed money from. Yeah, the second one. Second one. Okay. And number nine says she can't understand something. What she can't understand, or what can she not understand? Or what does she understand? What can she not understand? What second can one. She, mm -hmm. second one. Mm -hmm. Everybody agrees? We have two votes on this one. Yes. I agree. I agree. Okay, very well. And the number 10, it says he didn't come to the party for some reason. Why did not he come to the party? Why he did not come to the party? Why didn't he come to the party? Why didn't he come to the party? Just Why didn't he come to the party? The last uh, one. The last one. We have... the, the, the first yeah. one and the last one <laughs> are the same. same. Right. Just the last one is contracted in the contracted form. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, and the so, correct answer is then. Yeah, so if, if the first part is in the contracted form, maybe uh, the complement has to be in the contracted form. So, so the, third to the, third, the third one, okay. Yeah. So we have some people for he did not come to the party and didn't he come to the party. One more vote there. Didn't he come to the party? Didn't he, didn't come? he come? Okay, let's yeah. give it a shot. Okay, here comes, here comes the time and the moment for truth. Very good. Uh, yeah, and the good thing <laughs> is that yeah, you agreed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> congratulations. Wow. I'm I so thought proud it would be a big zero, <laughs> but no. <laughs> 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 but you know what happens that is very good is, for first of all, that you were very sure is this one. The second one is that you agreed on this one. So you were saying everybody this, this, and this. Yes, so it was very easy. Very good on the questions, my friends. We're not going to do more of these ones by now. So we didn't hesitate, right? <laughs> yeah, that is good. That is good. That is amazing. Let's see how it goes with already still jet and what's the difference? Okay, so it says uh, choose the correct phrase verb to complete these sentences. So He's 40, but he yet already or still plays football. Still? Still. Still, yeah. Good, still. Let's see how it goes then. Lisa works still in Leeds or lives or is still in Leeds. 
What is this? <laughs> the name of a city, right? Yeah, the elite's uh, name city. of a city in England. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Lips, I think. I don't know. It works. Work. <laughs> okay. <Both> works. <laughs> so, lives or works? Mm. Lives. Lives. That is. I think it's lives. Lives. To be honest with you, I believe that this has a mistake. Yeah. I believe that the. It option is. has to be still, but it's here. Anyways, yeah. let's see how it goes. I believe that this is not correct here. It's a problem. Yeah. Ah, the day gave us the answer. Yeah, this is the answer, I guess. But we don't know yeah. which verb is the one that they use. Let's see how it goes at the end, okay? Number three. We have yet already or still eaten dinner. Ready, maybe. Already, everybody agrees. Yeah. 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 Let's go for it. Very good. Number four, we haven't eaten dinner. Yeah. Still yet or already? Yet. 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 <laughs> good. You agreed on this one. Very good. Number five, we still yet or already haven't eaten dinner. Still. 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 Good. Still then. Number six. I've eaten dinner, but I'm still already or yet hungry. I'm still. Think. Mm -hmm. I've eaten dinner, but yeah, still. Still. Okay. Still. It's the winner. It's my no. case every day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's interesting. Okay, number seven. It's very early, but I'm already, already yet or still hungry. Already, already, already. Everybody agrees. Yes. Okay. Uh, number eight. It's dinner time, but I'm not very hungry. Already yet or still. Yeah. Yet. 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 Okay, let's give it a shot. Number nine. Have you washed your car still already or yet? Already. 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 Yeah. Good. Number ten. I have already still or yet washed my car. Ready? Already. Already. Everybody agrees? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Na, 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 na. How was the song? Dun, 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 dun. 80%. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> it was good. 80 is good. I mean, remember that we cannot look for perfection, but of course, we can learn from the little mistakes. It's a problem if you have, for example, six out of 10. Yeah, there are some problems there. But eight is good. Let's check, okay? So number one is correct still, okay? We use still to say that something is continuing. It has not changed or stopped. Still is used before the main verb. So that is important. Number two is not correct, but this is the one that I told you. It's... Uh -huh, it's still, uh, it's about the verb, yeah, but um, I mean, the answer was is because of the, the rule that it says here about the position. So that is the only thing that they were thinking about. And I was thinking that it was not correct because it's the only one that has this structure, right? Anyways, number three is correct already because when something happens earlier, we are going to use Already, right. already is used after an auxiliary or modal verb. So, if there is a verb with two or more words, already is used after the first word. Good. Number four, yet was the correct one. And yeah, we're not going to analyze because you almost agree on that. Uh, I believe that is it. I mean, ah, well, this is the one that is actually incorrect. 
you, ah, uh, yeah, I, I see that one. Can you see that you use already in two, uh, both sentences here that are similar? So, uh, have you washed your car yet was correct? Because um, it says that something that is expecting to happen. So you still haven't, but in this case is uh, yet. Okay. And I thought that it must be a negative word indicating, but yes, the, the action didn't happen. Exactly. Mm. So this is actually the only one that you had incorrect. The other one was incorrect, but it was, I mean, kind of weird. Anyways, it was a good thing. And again, you can see that when you know the answers, it's easier. So this is what you need to do uh, on the topic. This is the answer, right? and move on, that is it. If you are sure, that's it. If you have some doubts, well, analyze the, uh, the structure of the answers, check what will be the options, and then move on on that one. Good, let's move to the next one. Yeah, we'll have time, very good. This is quantifiers, all, must, both, either, neither, any, no, and none. Okay, so of course we're gonna choose the correct quantifier to complete the sentence. Number one, my friends, it says, I knocked on the door a few times, but there was, uh -huh. No response. No response. No response. No response, everybody agrees. Number two, uh-huh. Both us were, or we both were, or we were both shocked when we heard the news. We both were shocked. We both were shocked. Everybody agrees? Mm. We both were. We, no, we were both. We were both. We were both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it's such a question. Uh -huh. So we were, we were both. I think, um, I think uh, the oh, we no were man. both uh, <laughs> is is when uh, there are two things, um, Chuck and something else. If okay. we want to use, we were both Chuck and another thing. But if we if we if we are talking about two people, we both were. That, Very good. That caused some uh, just one thing for for mm. two people. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So we have one vote for we both were, and the two votes are for we were both. No, now I switch to we both were. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. It's winning. We both were. Uh, anybody else's? <laughs> uh -huh. One more vote, please. We were both. We were both. So now we are two and two. What do we do? We need one more vote then. We uh, were both. We were both, okay? So we have two and two. A person, a new, another person, a different person to vote. We both were. We both were. Okay, that is the winner then. Let's see what happens at the results. And number three says he wrote five books, but, aha. Uh -huh. Um, 
Known. Known. Everybody? Known, okay. Known. Nice. Everybody agrees on this one. Number four. I got a few emails, but I didn't answer. Any. 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 Everybody agrees on this one. Good. Number five. He's written two books, but I haven't read. Uh -huh. None. None. None of them. None of them. Everybody agrees? None. No. None of them. Yeah, none of them. No. no. Okay. Number six. He's both or both his or both of parents work in a bank. He's both. He's both. He's both. He's both. Okay, this is the winner. Number seven, he failed most of the or most or the must. Most of the. Most of the. Most of the. Okay, we agree on this one as well. Nice. Number nine, I've been working on the two reports, but. Neither. 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 Okay, everybody agrees with this as well. Nice. Neither of them is finished. Good. Number nine. She has lots of friends, but none. None. Uh -huh. None. None. Uh, we have two for known. And the rest of the class. Done. Okay, now let's take known. All right, please read. Crime in the USA, please in the big city. All? I know, I'm sorry. I was reading bad. All right. Yes, yes. Must of, must or the must crime. Must of. Must of, uh huh. Okay, must of. Everybody agrees? Yes. Yes. Must off. Okay, let's check then. Six out of ten. Okay. Let's check what happens. Number one was correct. No response. Uh, we use now plus noun in positive sentences. And any plus noun in negative in questions. Noun is a pronoun. An example, not followed by a noun. Okay, so no on the number one. Number two was not correct. Okay, the correct answer was we were both. Uh -huh. So we were both shocked when we heard the news. We can use both in mid position. That is before the main verb or after the verb be when it is the main verb. Mm -hmm. okay. We could also say both of us were, so that also is possible, but in this case, that was not a possibility. So uh, as you see, sometimes which verb is the one that we're using is very important. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's going to be about position of the verb uh, is going to be, or, or the noun is going to be relative different from any verb and the verb to be. Like the adjectives, you remember? In the adjectives, it happens exactly the same. So it's something that you need to remember. Remember the position of the words, if it's with a verb to be, or if it's with other verbs. That is important. 
Number two was also incorrect. We both were, okay? Oh no, that is number two, I'm sorry. And number three, he wrote five books, but none that was correct because we use a known of plus a noun and a pronoun to mean not one. So that will be it on this one. And we use neither of plus a noun pronoun with the same meaning, but when we're talking about two people or things. So this is the difference you can see there. So we can use none of plus the noun and or pronoun to mean not one or not any of a group of people or things. So that is when we're gonna use none. And we use neither of when we are talking a process noun and a pronoun when we're talking about uh, two people or things, two only, not a group, but two. Okay, very good. Number four was also correct, any. Yeah, this was kind of easy because remember that we use that in negative sentences. Okay, so that will be it. Number five was not correct. Uh, we said known and was either. We use either or neither when we're talking about two possibilities, but we can use only neither with positive verbs, not negative. So in this, it has to be, he's written two books, but I haven't read either of them. This is a strange one, right? But that is the rule. That is the rule. So we need to remember this kind of situations, right? Number six, incorrect as well. We said his both, and it was both his. Okay, we can also use both of the plus the noun or both of uh, plus the object pronoun to refer to two things or people. We cannot say both of plus the noun. So that is a grammar as well. It's like rules that we know. So in this case, it has to be both his parents work in a bank. Again, this sounds strange, right? When we say both his parents work in a bank, but it's, remember this is a different language. So that's, in this kind of sentences is when sometimes we don't understand what other people are saying, right? Because they use different order, different words. But this is the way it should be. Number seven was correct. He failed most of the exams he took, okay? We can use must plus and noun to talk about all people or things in general or most of the plus a noun to talk about specific people or things. In this case, we're talking about some specific exams. We use the must only to make superlative adjectives. Example given, the most beautiful, the most intelligent. So that is the explanation, my friends. Number eight, I've been working on the two reports but neither, of course, that was correct, of them is finished. We use neither with positive verbs to mean not either of two things or people, as we checked before. If we say either of them is finished, it would mean that one or the other is finished. In my end, one word can change everything. So we, if we say, for example, either of both or either of them is finished, we are saying one, or the other was finished, but in neither, none, right? Not it is or not the other one. So that is why these are important. Number nine, yeah, that was correct. She has lots of friends, but none of them will help her. We use none when we are talking about more than two people or things. And neither when we're talking about two people or things. Very good. So we have a lot of friends a group of people. Number 10 was not correct. This has to be must. Most crime in the US takes place in big city. We can use must plus a noun to talk about all people or things in general, or must of the plus a noun to talk about specific 
people or thing. In my hobby is going to change. So it's not the same to say most crime or most of the or people, for example. It's going to say, it's going to express a different thing. If we use most plus a noun, it's because we're talking about all peoples or things in general, everybody. But if we say most of the, we're talking about specific people or things within a group. So it's a different, it's a different concept. It's a different thing what we are saying. So we can say most crime or most of the crime, not most of crime. We use the most, and that is the other option, only to make superlative additives. And that's the one that we checked before. Example given, the most beautiful, the most intelligent, etc. Okay, so as you can see, there are specific rules. I don't know if you remember these rules when you were checking that with other teachers. These are important because if you use either one word or the other one, you will be expressing different things. American people, people that speak only English will understand specific things. And we need to be sure that what we are expressing is the correct thing that we are, we want to convey, the message that we want to convey. So it's very important, this part. Okay, good. We're going to do another one because he have another one here. But before that one, we're going to check the attendance, my friends. Good. Let's see how it goes. Ah, Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Perfect, thank you. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Present, Figueroa. Thank you. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present teacher. Present. Good, good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibeth Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sonia Guadalupe Benítez de Claros. Present teacher. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay. We are going to continue with the test uh, so we can identify things that we need to improve. Uh, this is normal, don't, don't worry. This is normal. The important thing is that whenever we identify a problem, we can check what can we do for us to improve these kind of things, okay? Before we move on to the test, uh, we're gonna watch another video. This is about slangs. So let's check how it goes, my friends. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about American slang words that you have to know. You don't have to necessarily use them in your speech, but you have to know them because when you're gonna communicate with a native speaker, with an American, you wanna understand what he wants to say. So if you're interested, please continue watching this video. Before we transition to naming those words, I would like to remind you that one of the best 
things to do right now is to take your exercise book and write the words down because you're going to be switching on different types of your memory. So you're going to be seeing me, this visual, you're going to be listening to me, audio or comprehensional memory. And then when you're writing things down with your own hand, this is another type of memory. So please write the words down and comment below if you've been doing that. So the word number one is bail. And bail means leaving abruptly. So for example, you went to the cinema with your friends and then you realize your homework isn't done yet and you say, hey guys, I'm sorry, I'm gonna bail. Which means you're gonna go home and just finish what you had to do. To feel blue is a pretty common phrase, slang phrase in all English speaking countries and to feel blue means to feel sad. How's that feel blue? <laughs> a buck. And a buck is American for a dollar. This costs 200 bucks, right? $200. Give me a buck. Give me a dollar. Give me a buck. The next expression is by the skin of my teeth. So for example, you were playing something and you hurt yourself, but then you say, I hurt myself just by the skin of my teeth, which means, yes, it hurt, but not a lot, just barely. Seems you've passed by the skin of your teeth. Creep. Oh, creep is a title that you give to a person who's really creepy. <laughs> That's a great explanation, right? It's a really weird, unpleasant and strange person who is acting in a weird way. For example, you have a guy who's stalking you and stalker is another uh, slang, somebody who's following you, who is trying to get your attention. And because he's around you all the time doing strange things, you can call him a creep. You got a creep. Couch potato should be one of my favorite ones because this is a person who sits on the sofa and does nothing all day. Everybody has this friend who you call all the time and he's like, ah, oh, I'm sorry, I won't be able to join you today. I want to spend some time at home. And you can call him couch potato because he doesn't want to go out. He just wants to sit at home and do nothing. The couch potato for a while. To crash, which means to fall asleep abruptly. And this happens to me every single day when I'm tired, I go to bed and I just crash, um, which means go to sleep really fast. A recording? Yes. Down to earth is actually an adjective and you can call a person down to earth when he's really simple, he doesn't try to show off, he's this normal guy, he's really down to earth. Funny. Down to earth. Another expression that Americans like is for real. For example, you tell somebody that you're going to Europe and he's like, oh, for real? Are you going to Europe? And this means honestly. So instead of saying honestly, you can say for real. For real, for real. Another slang phrase is the cold shoulder. If you give somebody a cold shoulder, it means you are ignoring them on purpose. So somebody is trying to reach out to you and you give them a cold shoulder which means you don't want to communicate with them. You're really giving me the cold shoulder. Another slang word, typically American, and I've been watching this movie called Miss Sloan. This movie is all about this slang phrase, and this is the phrase plead the fifth. This is very political thing, so there is the Fifth Amendment to the American Constitution, which allows you to not testify against yourself. So for example, imagine there's this court and there is this guy who's accused of a crime and somebody is asking him, did you commit this crime? The guy pleads the fifth, which means he says, according to the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution, I would not testify against myself. So he won't tell anything because this information can be used against him. So this is plead the fifth. Now let's go down to something a little easier. And I think I've mentioned this phrase in one of my videos. By the way, I have a lot of videos about American phrases. I have a video about 50 common phrases in English, video about 100 common words in English, and I have a video about 25 idioms in English. The links will be below and please watch them after watching this video. Next phrase is screw up and screw up means make a mistake. I'm sorry, I screwed up, I made a mistake. Screwed up, eh? Yeah, very. Instead of saying nice and wow and beautiful all the time, you can say, oh, that's sweet which means that's nice, but making your speech diverse using different words is actually really helpful for your vocabulary and really helpful for other people because you don't sound the same all over again. So write this down, sweet means nice. Sweet. Tight. This word can be used when you're talking about competition. So 
tight competition means there is a really small gap between two competitors and the competition becomes really tight. So it's really intense and they have to work really hard to surpass each other. Tight. The next word is to trash. You probably know the noun trash and trash is the same as rubbish, rubbish is British, trash is American. This means all of the things that you throw away. But to trash means to destroy something. So for example, he trashed his car means he destroyed his car, maybe he had an accident and now he has to get a new one. So he trashed his car. Wrap up is a word that I hear every day and wrap up means to finish something. Okay guys, let's wrap up, let's finish. Let's wrap up, yeah. To hang out. This is a word that you can use when you're relating to your friends, you're inviting them to come over and you say come over to my place, which means come to my place and let's hang out, let's do something together. You can also use the word to hang out to describe that you're actually not busy with anything. So for example, you sit at home and your friend calls you and asks where you're up to, which means what are you doing right now? And you're like, nothing, just hanging out. So you're just spending your time at home, maybe you're watching YouTube videos, so nothing serious. I'm just hanging out. Just hang out. Another word that I love and that I hear a lot is wheels. And you know wheels? which means, you know, something that is rolling in your car. But you can also use the word wheels instead of using the word car. So I have my own wheels today, which means today you're driving, you're not taking an Uber or a taxi. And this way you can use the word wheels in the meaning of a car. The next one you've probably heard thousands of times and the word is babe. And you, I would not recommend using this word, but you need to understand. So somebody, if, if you're a female and somebody is calling you babe, uh, this is not really polite, but this means that the person who's calling you babe finds you attractive and really hot. Babe, 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 no babe. To bust somebody. To get busted means to be caught for doing something illegal, something you were not supposed to do. For example, police busts burglars every day in the streets of San Francisco. Police is everywhere, they catch burglars or they catch people who are um, disregarding the rules. So to get busted means to get arrested, to be caught. If you had a really good time watching this video, you can tell your friends that you had a blast. And have a blast means to be really entertained, to have really good time, to really enjoy doing something. So uh, if you enjoyed watching this video, you can like it and you can comment below. Oh my God, Marina, I had a blast. This is a really cool video. I have a blast. And the last word that I wanted to share with you today is epic fail. An epic fail means complete disaster, awful. I'm laughing because it is, it, it is used in the memes all the time. In a formal meeting, you won't really use the word epic fail, but I don't know, if your friend tried to hit up on a girl, tried to flirt with a girl and the girl just told that she's married, then that guy had an epic fail. That was a pretty epic fail. These were the slang words that I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for watching this video. There are three more videos that I suggest you to watch. The first is 100 common words in English. The second is 50 common phrases in English. And the third is 25 idioms in English that you should know to sound more American. The links will be below. Please let me know if you enjoyed watching this video and I will see you in the next vlogs. Please subscribe if you haven't yet, the red button. See you soon, bye. Hey guys, Great. welcome to my channel. What did you get from the video? There are many ways to express yourself, not uh, as serious as we are talking about, about or related to, um, to business English or to English for work or something like this. For example, um, to couch, to be a couch potato, maybe like I'm just, uh, lying in my couch and just breathing. <laughs> uh, also, for example, uh, um, the, the girl was talking about uh, when you do something that uh, it fails, uh, but in an intense 
way or intense manner. Like I screw up, uh, for example, the meeting that, that I had today at the office or something like this, uh, maybe you said something that it wasn't uh, the best, uh, uh -huh, when, uh, that, that it wasn't the best for uh, the meeting and the result is that you maybe lost your business or, or something like this. Um, uh, I, I don't know, maybe there are many, many slangs or a, just um, more common phrases that we can use in order to sound more, a, more uh, related with the American English uh -huh, or the United States English, maybe. Uh -huh. Very good, perfect, thank you. Yeah, many words, many phrases. Any other opinion or comments? Mm, I am a little confused. Um, when you are uh, using English, formal English for work, do you usually use that expression? No, this is like uh, more in a natural language. It's like uh, a language that is not formal, that is not only on the street. I mean, if you are with your friends, you can use this kind of language. Of course, it's not possible to use that language in a normal way, in an interview or something like that, it's not. Okay. Okay, but uh, Juan Miguel was also right. I mean, there are many ways that you can express yourself. Sometimes what happens uh, when we are learning English is that we're thinking in one word in Spanish, right? And we want to use that word in English and you say, oh, I don't know how to say that one. But I mean, there are many ways of expressing yourself. So you don't have to use exactly that word. You can use a lot of, different ways, different uh, verbs, nouns, expressions. So you transmit the message that you want to transmit. So that happens. And it's very important that you learn all kinds of language because, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you mean that you get a job because of your English and you go to other country, but of course you are going to go on the streets and speak with people. So yeah that is something that we need to learn and there are words that are kind of very common like bucks uh, how much is this five bucks that is very 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 common in all across the u.s i mean that is very normal screw up is very very popular very normal and uh, the context of some words also are important so you understand how it's going to be like Okay, so let's do another uh, exercise about um, non either, neither, some. Let's see how it goes, okay? Let's work together. So uh, let's check this one. Number one it says, Nick, John, I need some money. Does, uh huh, non either, neither, some. Do you have any money? Can I borrow? What might be the answer? Some. Some. Everybody maybe. agrees? Yeah. Either, yeah, maybe. Some. Okay, we have one either and two some. Either. Either one and one or two and two. Uh -huh. It's that either is for, for positive sentences and neither, no, the other way around, right? 
Uh, yeah. Either is for positive sentences and either for negative sentences, right? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. So it's going to be either or some or other. Some. Some. Uh, I, I remember that some are, some is used when you are talking uh, just in, uh, not in questions, okay? Uh, if you are uh, making a question, you have to use any, and any is used uh, when you are um, talking uh, like in a negative way or something like this. So for me, some is not an option, but I don't know if I'm right. That is the question. Which one is the correct option, right? So then is it neither? Neither of you? Does neither. neither. Oh, hmm, okay. Neither is another option now. We have two either, two some, and one neither. And some. Rest, some. Okay, so it seems some is going to be the one here. Let's see how it goes, okay? Number two, uh, neither both, all or none, a boy brought a coat. Which one is going to be the one? None. None. And the rest of the class? Don't be afraid, my friends. If it's not correct, we need to study and that's it. Of course, we need to analyze. Mm -hmm. yeah. None. None. Non boy brought a coat. Let's take that one then. Number three, it says neither my uncle and or nor are but my uncle come to the party. Nor? Nor. Yeah, nor. 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 Okay, like the soup. Nor. Okay. Number four, which sentence is correct? Both we have been to Italy. We have both been to Italy. We have both have been to Italy. Both of us have been to Italy. Think about it. We have both been to Italy. We have both been to Italy. The letter B and the rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have both been to Italy. Okay, we have both been to Italy. Letter B. We have both have been to Italy. Oh, okay, we have, C. we have two B and one C. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the class? Let me think, let me think. We have both been, we have all have been. No, I was trying to be teacher. We have both been to it. Okay, so let's take letter B. And let's move on to number five. I like to have money, but I don't have. No, none, any, or neither. Any for me. Any. 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 
two Ns and the rest of the people. Any. Good, any will be then. Next one is going to be six. He has two brothers, but I haven't met either, neither, no, and none of them. Neither. Neither. Either. Either. No, 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 no. Maybe none. None, none of them. No, no. We haven't met no. none of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have one either and I guess two knowns. No, it's okay, no, teacher. I haven't no. met Three one of them. Okay, very well. Known is going to be the one. Number seven, I have to read three books, but I haven't read uh -huh. none, neither, either, or any yet. Any. Any, any. Two any's. Yes, because cannot be too negative in the same sentence. Okay. And none and neither. Mm, I had to read, uh-huh, any. Any. Any then, let's check it out. Number eight, I watched five films during the festival, but either, neither, none, or any of them was good. None? None. 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 And the rest of the class? None. None. Let's take none then. Number nine. Most of the or most or all or none students I know pass the exam. Most of the. Most of the, everybody agrees? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Most of the students I know passed the exam. And number 10, we spend all of or all or all of the or all the day outdoors. For me, all day. All, all day. All day. All day. There be all day. Okay. Drum, 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 drum. And 70. Okay. One more. Number one was not correct. Okay. Uh, we got some, and it was either. Why was either? Because is yeah, in a question we can use actually either. And uh, there are just two people, right? Actually it says we can use either of plus object pronouns to talk about the choice between two possibilities. Does either of you have money? So does one or the other have money? So that will be the answer. Number two was not correct. It was supposed to be neither. Neither boy brought a coat. That sounds kind of strange. I know, I understand that one. We can use neither plus singular noun. We cannot use any of the other options plus singular noun. Boy is a singular noun. And that's why we need to use neither. Okay. Okay. Number three was correct. Pretty good. We say neither A nor B, so nor, okay? Because it's negative, this, nor this or the other, right? Good, good. Number four was also correct. We have both been to Italy, nice. We can use both in mid position. This is before the main verb or after the verb be when it is the main verb. Nice, good, good. Number five was also correct. Any, yeah, we use any in negative sentences and it can be used as a pronoun. Uh, for example, not followed by a noun. 
No cannot be used as a pronoun. None cannot be used with a negative verb and neither can only be used when we are talking about two choices. Good. Number six was not correct. The answer was either, again, because there are two possibilities. That is a very important rule. So we can use either when we're talking about two possibilities and we can use it with a negative verb. So that's why we have to use either. Number seven. So that was correct, any. We can use any in negative sentences to mean none and it can be used as a pronoun. Very good. That was a good one. Number eight was also correct. I watched five films during the festival, but none of them was good. We can use noun of plus the noun or pronoun to mean not one or not any of a group of people or things. Because this is a group, that's why it's going to be known. Okay. And we cannot use either or either because we are not talking about two elements. And we cannot use any in an affirmative sentence to mean not. I believe after this exercise, it's going to be very clear that either and neither is for two possibilities. Only two. Okay. Number nine was correct. Most of the students I know pass the exam. We can use must plus a noun to talk about all people or things in general. Good. And the last one was also correct. We spend all day outdoors. So we say all day, all night, all month, all year to mean the entire day, night, month, etc. Very good. Any questions with this? I guess now it's a little bit more clear. So we are not going to continue with this specifically. We're going to go to the other one that is whatever, whenever, whatever, whoever, in who, however, actually. Are you ready for the next challenge? Let's make it. So, number one, you can arrange the furniture, whatever, however, whichever you want. However. However. Mm -hmm. Everybody agrees? Maybe whatever. Whatever. We have okay. one whatever and one however. <laughs> that sounds funny. <laughs> Which one, I'm sorry? However for me. However, okay. Two however and one whatever. However. However, okay. Whatever. <laughs> Okay, you can say take whichever option. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> there should be correct, but let's see on this number one. Number two, you must have your car serviced every year or every 10,000 kilometers. However, whichever, whatever happens first. Whichever, no, whatever. Whatever. One whatever. Yeah, whatever. For me, it's whatever. I think for, for me, whatever. all of them are whatever. Okay. <laughs> so two whatevers. And Giselle, you say something? No, I think it's whichever. 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 Okay, so we have one whichever and two whatever. Yeah. I'm sorry, which one? One whichever, two whatever. Hi, anybody else's? Whatever. Whatever, okay. Whatever is gonna be then. Number three, we must do whatever, whenever, however is necessary to bring the attackers to justice. Whatever for me. Whatever. 
I'm sorry, which yeah, one? Do whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever you say, Roxanne. I'm sorry, I didn't listen. Yes. Whatever. All right. Whatever is going to be. Number four. As I only need a computer to work, I can do it from wherever, whenever, whatever I want. Whenever. 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 <laughs> okay, whenever or wherever. I whenever. think it's whatever. Whenever, whenever. Whenever, whenever. <laughs> okay, we have two whatever and two whenever. For me, it's wherever, because it's where you want to do that action. So it's not, related to the place. And not, not when, because when is uh, maybe a, a manner of time, yeah? So okay. for me, it's where, wherever. Okay, whatever wins three to two, but this was very tight. Number five. Whichever, whoever, or however, to the decision is the responsible for what has happened. Whoever, Which, whoever. Yeah, whoever, yeah, whoever. Sorry. Whoever. whoever, nice, we agreed on this one. Number six, however, or whatever, or whenever hard I try, I still can't find a job. However, maybe. However. However. Two howevers. However. However. However is the winner. Number seven. You can ask me whatever, whatever, whenever you have a question. Whenever. 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 When, whenever. Yeah, whenever. whenever. Good. We agreed on this one. Number eight, he says he's from Lipstein. Whatever, whichever, or however that is. Whatever. Whatever. Uh -huh, and the rest? Whatever. Whatever. All right. So that will be it. Number nine, I understand English or German, so you can speak whatever, however, whichever. 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 Mm, okay, you agreed on this one as well. Whichever, good. Last one, and then we go to the truth. So whenever, uh, however, whoever they are, they are not welcomed here. Whoever. Whoever, maybe. Whoever. Whoever. Whoever is the winner, it seems here. Good. Dun, 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 dun. And we have 90. Very good job on this one. So let's check only the one that is not correct because there were, ah, this is the one. Okay. <laughs> good. I said whichever, yay. Yeah, whichever was the answer. Yeah, because it's, yeah. There are two options. Remember that which. And what, do you remember the difference? What is for general? I mean, what is your favorite color? Or which is your favorite color? So what is when you have infinite options? And which is when you have limited options? In this case, it says you must have your car service every year or every 10,000 kilometers. So we have two options only, and that's why is whichever. Good. So you are good in this part, nice, I'm proud of you. Let's take one or two more and then we're gonna switch activities. So, clauses of contrast and purpose. What is that? Ah, it's going to be very easy. Okay, let's see. Number one, despite, although, in spite being rich, he is rather unhappy. Spite, maybe, because I've heard the usage in spite is uh, in the sentence I've heard it, I've heard in spite of. Okay, good. Despite, maybe. Despite. 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 
We have two spites and the other people. Agree, teacher. Despite, good. Number two, I know it's good and affordable. Although, but however, I don't like it. However. 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 Hey, we agreed on this one, nice. Number three, it is better to do it slowly. So not to, or in order to not, or in order not to make a mistake. For me, in order not to. In order not to, the last one. I agree with Heidi. Yes, I'm angry. angry. Okay, you agree. Nice, good. Number four. However, despite, although, he got up late, he arrived in time for the interview. Mm, maybe although? Although, okay, everybody agrees? Yes, I agree. Okay, I agree. to although. And the rest of the class? Nobody else's. Let's take all though then. Number five, I'm studying English for having or to have or for have more job opportunities. To have? To have for me too. To have. To have. Okay. To have. Number six, we bought more t-shirts. Uh-huh, and then it says, for so us, so that everyone could have one. So that for me. So that. So that. Okay. It seems it's gonna be so that. Number seven. Although, despite or in spite of the fact that they are good friends, they argue a lot. In spite of the fact. Okay. In spite of the fact. Every, anybody else's? In spite of the fact. Okay, any other? I agree. Okay, so in spite, oops, no, no, that one, this one, good. Number eight, uh, she noted down so as to not forget or in order to not forget or so as not to forget. So as not to. So as not to the last one. The last one, agree. Okay, the rest of the class. I agree too. Okay, so it's gonna be, so as not to. Number nine, despite even though, however, his health isn't too good, he never misses a class. Even though. 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 Nice. Last one. He set his alarm so that or two or four remember to take his medication. To remember. To remember. To remember. Okay, to remember. And the rest of the class. To remember. To remember, remember. Okay, let's take two then. 
And here comes Johnny. Good, you are amazing. This one was perfect. Very, very nice. You can see that you know a lot of things, right? That's very good. You're gonna be very good at the toy. Nice. Okay, and uh, well, and not just to be doing some tests, so we're gonna watch another little video and then I will tell you a little homework that we have for tomorrow, okay? Let me just check here, hold on a second. Oh my goodness, I don't have it here. Let me just check and open here. Hold on a second. I don't have it here. Hold on. Okay, this is the one. Okay, let's watch it and then comments please on this. I had a coaching client last year say something that was incredibly wise. When he hired me, and in other words, I took him on as a coaching client, he said, you know, Alex, the reason that I wanted to be your client is because I want to be where you are in a few years, and I know you did not get there by accident. You designed your life. And I thought that was extremely wise and spot on, because the thing is, so many of us wake up when we're 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 and realize, we don't even know why we got here or how we're here. And we know for sure that this is not where I wanted to be, where we wanted to be years and years ago. Now in this video, I wanna share my personal process I use for not only scripting the direction of your life, but how I reinvented my own life and consciously created it from 26 until 30. What's up guys, Alex Hine here, author of the book Master of the Day. Now in my own life here, really I think that designing your life and making it go forward in the direction you want it to go forward has three parts. And the very first part is the design, the second part is the habits you use or you do on a daily basis, and the third is the follow through or the follow up. In other words, how do you actually stay on track when you get off track? Because half of the game of goal achievement is purely when you get punched in the face, what are you gonna do differently to get back up and get back in the fight? Now for me, the first thing is vision. It's basically the design. You know, if you just sit down for a day, you pour a coffee, you get out a piece of paper, and you write down what would be the coolest thing that could happen over the next five years in my life. If you just do that, you are already ahead of 99% of humanity who show up with no game plan, no vision for the future, no clue what they would like to create besides you know, I would like more money, or I'd like that girl or that guy, or I'd like a nicer car. There's almost no consciousness or conscious energy given to thinking about what do I want to build in the future? Like what consciously and concretely do I want to improve? So for me, the way that I do that is, first of all, I have a journal where I'm regularly writing down updates for the kind of life that I want to build. You know, it starts with the vision, which makes me think of the fact that the skyscrapers of New York started with a picture in somebody's head. And so did spaceships. And so did curing a difficult disease. And so when I think of it like that, I always make sure I'm consciously creating, even if it is just in my thoughts, even if it's just up there, 
both in print journals and in a document that I call five years from today. So the three things that I use for my yearly envisioning are one, the yearly envisioning process I've talked about here, which is basically at the start of each year, I write down what is the coolest thing that could happen this year, like perfect year, no limitations, no, just be realistic. But like, what would be the coolest thing that could happen? I put it on one piece of paper that's always on my desk every single day and I review it twice per day. Now from there, that yearly document also has my daily habits, the unique projects I'm working on in each quarter of the year, as well as the things I know that I need to work on to get better, basically, to improve myself. The second thing is the pocket journal I carry around. This for me is always to record things that may change about my thinking, ideas I get when I read or listen to podcasts, as well as little intuitive hunches that come up. So if I'm talking to a friend or I'm reading a book and I'm like, wow, that would be an awesome idea. For example, that's where all my books came from. Wouldn't it be cool too? Dot, dot, dot. I put it down in this little book. It's just a little three by five moleskin that I always carry around with me. And then day by day, I can flip through that and be like, you know what? These were those cool things I wanted to basically manifest and create in my own life. Let me just keep a note of them. The second way I do that is by doing a weekly journal page. Now the weekly journal page is just a strategy page, which I talked about in my recent video on journaling for success. And in that strategy page, it's basically, where are you, Alex? Where do you wanna be? And are those habits you're doing every day sufficient enough to actually get you there? So the whole point of this journal page is reflection. You're doing this, are you still on track? If not, what has to change? And then finally, I have this little journal notebook, a digital notebook in Evernote, and it just says five years from today. Now, I don't really stick with that idea of five years from today, but the point for me is where do I want to go? In what direction? It could be as simple as moving. Like I know I'm moving to California after I'm done with my doctorate in Portland. It could be as simple as the relationship you want to be in. For example, I'm 30. I know that I want to be married by 35, so I can have that there. I know that I want to have a private practice and a traditionally published book and three, four vacations per year. I put all of that down where I don't know how I'm going to make it happen yet, but it will happen for sure. I haven't quite fleshed out the process. The point is that you're putting trajectories in your brain and in your subconscious. And when you check that every once in a while, you're kind of like, oh yeah, I knew I wanted to do that, but all right, let's start thinking about how I can actually do it. And almost all of those things come true for me, especially if you regularly review that. Now, the second piece here is your habits. So the daily action steps that you're gonna actually do to make that a reality. Now, I've shared this philosophy many times. It makes up the bulk of my book, Master the Day. But the point is that you think about the goals you wanna reach, and then you have to break them down. Forget the goal, but break it down into a daily habit. So with fitness, you forget losing 30 pounds. The habit is, cook every day, go to the gym 20 minutes a day. You wanna write a book, you forget having written a book, you put down the habit, write 500 words a day. You wanna be in an amazing relationship in two years, you forget that goal, you put the habit, I'm gonna go out to four events where I might meet like-minded people. And that's your daily habit. So you bring it back to, what do I have to do today? Now the way I track that is a combination of ways. So not only in that yearly visioning document do I put that, I also record it in Evernote. And the reason I do that is because every Thursday, I have a 30 to 45 minute mastermind call. Now I've had a personal mastermind for over four years now, every single week. And it's basically started when I started my business because that was so difficult for me. But it progressed to like, are you happy? Are you building the life you want? Are you, is your ladder up against the right wall as the saying goes? Because you might climb the ladder of success and realize you climbed the wrong ladder and you're not where you wanna be. So it's also about conscious goal setting and being crystal clear on the path forward, making sure you're going down the right path you wanna be down. So I actually have a maximum of three goals per year and then three habits per goal. For example, the goals are often much more complex than you think. Like let's say you've only been sleeping five hours a night. Well, your daily ritual may have to be, I'm gonna disconnect from the computer at 11, I'm not gonna have coffee after five, and I'm not gonna stress myself out with homework or with work after a certain time. It may take a few habits. Just like doing well in school or high performing at your work may also be more than one habit. It may mean I'm gonna study 
this study strategy every day and apply that. Or I'm gonna do an extra one hour of work per day or self-study or something else. The way that I personally do it is just three habits per actual goal. And those I track in a weekly scorecard document, which is these are the three things, did I do them Monday through Sunday? And then when I get to my Thursday night mastermind, we all get on the phone and I basically give a report. I did this 50% of the time, 90% of the time. This is what didn't work. This is what I have to improve. And then the third part for me about consciously designing your life and going forward is really just two things. It's the follow through to make sure you actually do these things. And then number two, it's following little intuitions about when you have to pivot. So the way I keep the follow through going is every night I do a little master the day journal page. The journal's not out yet, but I still have a print kind of document that I use for tracking. Did I do this? Where do I have to improve myself? The Thursday Mastermind, which is a 45 minute call, we use Uber Conference for free. You could do the exact same with a few of your friends or people online. My very first mastermind was totally online people I'd met that were other internet entrepreneurs. Now from there, I have the Thursday Mastermind, I have the weekly strategy journal page, and I have my daily habit tracking. And besides those three things, all I do is carry around that little pocket moleskin journal I told you about, because then I feel like if something doesn't feel right at all, like you're off track, you don't like this job, you're dating someone and you realize something's not right, I write down the intuitions because I can't always consciously articulate the next move. Sometimes it's easy, I wanna to move to California. Other times it's not. Do I stay in this relationship? Is this business still what really excites me? Am I proud of all the work I've created? Those are things that may be better governed by your intuition and better understood. So I just keep a log of all the little intuitive impressions and then I systematically explore them more and then I take time to just go through them and see what's behind them and unpack them. So I hope that helps you guys. That's a little bit about my process for consciously scripting your life, which has been my whole shtick for a while. And that's really the thing that made a biggest difference for me going from 24 or 25 where I had done nothing impressive with my life. Very average student, hadn't done much besides traveled to now really contributing and producing a lot and having had a productive life the last five or so years. Now, before you go, I want you to leave a comment there below. Let me know for you, if you could consciously script your life, what would be the first thing you think is important? Hey guys, well, one of the things that goes along with being in sage mode, like I talk about here, is being calm and being sage. Now the Biomat is a pad you can put on your bed or on the floor which uses technology that was actually discovered by NASA to help you reduce stress and fatigue. Now it produces negative ions which are considered nature's energizer. And these negative ions you can find in abundance in places like forests and mountains, waterfalls and oceans. Now the Biomat in particular is comprised of three parts that helps you have that stress relief and that fatigue relief. Now the Biomat can also help with pain relief and circulation. It is FDA cleared and one of the cool things is that it profoundly affects both the nervous system while also promoting deep relaxation. So it kind of has this dual energizing and relaxing effect. Also, the people at the Biomat store recommend and encourage you to call for personalized customer service and advice. It's kind of unique among companies now that basically don't want to deal with you. So that is worth investigating as well. And like some customers have said, it's really restorative. So a direct quote from one person was that it's the world's greatest power nap. Check out the Biomat link here on. Okay, so what did you get from the video? In order to achieve a goal, first you need to uh, breathe and just uh, stop and start thinking and, and it's like, um, look at the picture first. Like the, um, uh, he was making the comparison about a, a building, I don't remember the name, that it was first in a, someone's mind, like a picture or like a plan. And then it started from the very beginning. Very good, perfect. So that is it. Sometimes many things are there in your mind and you can start from there, right? You can organize your ideas and go from there. So good. Any other comments or opinion?
no more comments. Okay, so for first of all, um, good job finishing all the platforms. So uh, I'm gonna check and send the results tomorrow. And uh, second, tomorrow we will be doing the, the final class, of course, and also we will be doing the, the survey from Insafo. Remember that we're going to do that together. Okay, it's very, very important. And we have a homework for tomorrow, uh, according to the video that we chat. Uh, two parts, okay? You are going to speak about yourself tomorrow. You are going to speak about who you are right now. In many aspects, you can speak about who you are in your mind, uh, physically, or uh, in your professional career, who you are in uh, different levels. And then you are going to express what would you like to be in five years from now? What are you going to be doing? Where are you going to be? Um, how you are going to be different from now and on the future? Any questions about the homework for tomorrow? No, no teacher. Good. So my friends, I'm gonna check the attendance and, uh, and as I was telling you, tomorrow is our last class. As I understand, you will be starting classes next Monday. So if that happens, Ooh. it will be amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I was checking on the plans. And I believe that you will be starting next Monday. That is, that is the plan. Of course, you will be receiving do, throughout the week, the links and any other information. Uh, if it's not possible on Monday, I guess you're not going to wait that much. Maybe it's going to be the next Monday, but as the plans I say so, it's going to be this incoming Monday. So let's check uh, emails and WhatsApp to, for you to, to be aware mm -hmm. on this one. Okay, oh. uh, uh -huh. do you have a question? No, 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 okay. Good, perfect. So, Ada, Susana, Cáceres, Mendoza. Perfect. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Gracias, teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Here. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present, teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present, teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present, teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present, teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present, teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Sorry, sorry. Present. Uh, me, Danny, I ah, was okay. uh, having problems with the internet. Okay, no problem. I'm going to check it out. Uh, Sonia Guadalupe Benitez de Claros. Present, teacher. Good. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, my friends, uh, the 101 of today is free if you want to stay. And uh, well, see you tomorrow in our last class of this module. Have a good night and uh, dream in English. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Hello, Francisco. Do you have any questions? Any doubts? No, teacher. Yeah, I see that you stayed uh, today. So, do you have any questions or would you like to practice? Uh, uh, sorry, teacher. Uh, I. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the, the problem is uh, I uh, received my shift in my work. 
today, I start at uh, 10 p.m. and I uh, don't disconnect the, the class teacher. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. That is fine. Have a nice shift. Thank you, teacher. Have a good night. So do you. Bye-bye.